are resistant to play that's resistant to sort of steroid gaze with uh, um, if you're looking for something like AVR two, and one that's susceptible at the top there. Yeah. Um, but in contrast to these other two R genes, RPS2 is present at every accession of CC plus to date. Um, so it's a good sort of constant test case. And so we took um, five alleles of RPS2 from across this phylogeny, one susceptible and four resistant to this pathogen, and um, clone them in to um, uh, RPS2 knockout background at three different insertion sites using a pre lock system. So essentially the only difference is the presence and type of RPS2 allele at these three different positions. So it's sort of about 18 uh, lines total that we created. Um, and we also created this knockout line just with an empty vector inserted at that site. Okay, so then what I did was I drew these lines in the field, um, tested for the presence or absence of pathogen. I never detected it. Um, Part of the field site. I promise you the plants are there. These are the only Arabidopsis you'll see in this spot, but look, they're there. Um, when these plants had finished flowering and set seed, I collected them, took them back to the lab, and measured a suite of seven fitness proxies that included a um, total seed set, which for an annual plant like Arabidopsis is a fairly good measure of um, total micron fitness. Okay, so what are we expecting to see here? So essentially what we saw before was this cost of resistance in the absence of pathogen. So the resistant lines here are less fit than the knockouts. And there's an additional type of comparison that you can do with RPS2, and that's comparing the resistant to the susceptible alleles. And you might expect to see a, a, a smaller difference between the resistant and susceptible than the resistant um, and the knockout lines. Okay, so what did we actually see? Um, so these are the results for the three different insertion sites. And, um, you can see that there's actually no consistent differences in fitness between the resistant clays and the susceptible clays of the allele here. But in contrast, there's a number of lines with an allele of RPS2 that are significantly more fit than these knockout lines. Um, so we basically, this was the opposite of what we expected, right? There's no cost of resistance here. And so we thought, you know, maybe there was pathogen in the field and we just didn't detect so I, I repeated this experiment a second time in the growth chamber where we were much more certain that there was no pathogen present. And I again observed the similar results. So again, no consistent difference in fitness between the resistant and susceptible um, lines, but a couple of lines that were with the copy of RPS2 that were more fit than the knockouts. And I actually repeated this experiment a third time in sterile conditions where there are no bacteria present. So we're certain that no pathogen and again, observed consistent results. So no significant difference, or no consistent differences in fitness between the resistant and susceptible clays of the allele, um, but lines with a copy of RPS2 that are, are significantly more fit than the knockout. So this really convinced me that there really is this, this fitness benefit to having an allele of RPS2 in the absence of pathogen, that RPS2 is doing some additional function If you were looking at those experiments with a critical eye, you probably noticed that there was quite a lot of variation in fitness between um, lines with an allele of RPS2 within and between insertion sites. And we noticed this too. So what the first thing I thought to correct for was you know, RPS2 means basal expression level. And uh, that's on the y-axis here. Um, and you can see that in the allele series, there's definitely significant variation in RPS2 expression level um, at this time. Um, does variation in RPS2 expression level affect function? Well, in the presence of pathogen, it absolutely does. So this is the only slide I'm going to show you that's in the presence of pathogen today. And on the y-axis here, we have a measure of a hypersensitive response, which is a measure of how RPS2 is responding to the pathogen. And you can see that for the resistant lines here, there is a significant relationship between the expression level at this time and um, hypersensitive response. Where there's, there's not that relationship for susceptible alleles, but we wouldn't expect to see that. Okay, so what about in the absence of pathogen? RPS2 expression level of 
affecting the function of the axis of capture. Um, well, what I can say is that if you um, correlate RPS2 expression with fitness in the field, um, you see a significant negative relationship between RPS2 expression and um, fitness, both for the resistant and the skeptical plate. Um, and so then lines with lower expression of RPS2 are significantly more fit than the knockout, whereas as RPS2 <coughs> increases, um, we lose that difference from the knockout. Okay, so we, we got interested in the, the mechanism of these differences in, in fitness that we observed. So I did an RNA seq experiment in sterile conditions in the absence of we looked at um, the resistant clade of allele, the susceptible clade, both with similar levels of RPS2 expression, then the knockout and a higher expression level are resistant allele. And this is the difference, these are the significantly differentially expressed genes in the comparison of resistant and susceptible allele. And there's only 16 of them. Um, they're enriched for like drought response genes, and there's none of them that are unique to this comparison. Um, of resistance to susceptible. So I would suggest that the reason that we don't see consistent differences in fitness between resistant and susceptible play in a allele in the absence of pathogen is really because there's no difference in how these alleles are functioning. They're doing the same thing. Um, so what is it that they're doing? Okay, so we can look at this by comparing lines with an allele or RPS2 to the knockout. And here we see uh, a lot more genes that are differentially expressed, which is heartening. Um, these genes are enriched for okay, um, genes involved with go ontologies of the stress response, induced response, um, defense response, and biotic stress. And those type of genes are upregulated in the knockout relative to lines with an active RPS2. Um, so we think that what RPS2 is doing in the absence of pathogen is actually negatively regulating these, these components. So we didn't include survival as a measure of fitness, and that's because most of the plants died after transplanting, um, and there was so it was it was just and it was entirely non-related to the allele that they had. So we thought you know it was we couldn't really include that as a measure. Yeah. 